Hi, thanks for tuning in once again. Today I'll give you what I consider to be the real key to mastering legato fast. And then I'll show you one of my favorite exercises for building left hand strength and speed. But what is the real key to mastering legato? Well, someone might say, it's lots of practice. Another one might say, it's playing the same lick over and over again until you have it. And those answers are of course part of the truth, but I'm not talking about how to do it. I'm talking about the key to learning it. A key is something that if you have it, you can unlock the door. It's not hard and it doesn't require you to do a lot of work. You just put the key in the lock, turn it and the door opens. So if I tell you to practice a lot, will that ensure that you can become a master at this technique? If I tell a hundred people that the key to mastering legato is to practice a lot, will they do it? Of course not, because that's not the key. The key is not in anything you do, but in a specific way of thinking. What on earth do you mean, Klaus? Are you going to give me a lot of psycho mumbo jumbo now or show me some freaking licks? I like the licks, thank you. We're going to get to that in the end of this video, but I just want to give you a simple process that you can go through that will mean more to whether or not you get to master this technique. It's so simple and quick to do. What makes you do what you do? If you go out and buy a new guitar, what makes you do that? It's simple, right? You're convinced that the time and money you spend on buying that guitar are of less worth than the guitar itself. And buying the guitar is a better trade than going out and buying something else right now. Inside of you, you have a scale with a guitar on the one end and money and time in the other end. And the guitar weighs much more than the money and the time, so you go for the guitar. But what if the guitar was twice as expensive? What if you had to pay twice the amount? Well, now the money and the time would begin to weigh more on the scale, so much maybe that the scale would tip in the other direction. So now you don't think that the money you have to pay and the time you have to invest is worth the guitar. Advertisers know this, of course, and they do everything they can to present the guitar as, as valuable an item as possible. They tell stories about how this guitar was made in the custom shop by Luthiers with lots of experience. They tell us how the wood is hand-picked, how the pickups are made especially for this model. They make sure that some well-known guitarist is playing the guitar so that the feelings we associate with that artist rubs off on the instrument and makes, us, makes it more valuable in our perception. This is called selling, of course, and if the manufacturer delivers what he promises, selling is great. If it's used to make you take a new step and do something great for yourself. It's not selling that's the problem when there is a problem. It's creating a product that gives people what they expect that's sometimes the problem. But my point is this, whenever you take action and do anything, it's because you are convinced that what the action will give you is worth more than the time, energy or money that you have to spend on it. And this is the key to mastering super legato as well and in the fastest way possible. If you're completely sold on learning it, you're completely convinced that whatever investments of time you have to put in, it will be worth it 10 times over. If you're a little convinced, you'll practice a little, be a bit skeptical and possibly quit when it gets a little difficult because your scale isn't tilted completely towards mastering legato. You're a little convinced, so it doesn't take that many obstacles before the scale tips right back again and you quit. And that's why people who are generally more skeptical than they are enthusiastic never will reach the skill level they want. Being skeptical means being very reluctant about believing anything new. You hold back from even beginning the process of putting on and thinking about all the advantages of investing time and energy into something new. They are more afraid of being disappointed than they are of not learning what they want. Being skeptical is really being afraid. It's the fear of what if it doesn't work out? What if it, instead of learning it, I'll, I'll, I'll fail and I don't make it? What if this method doesn't work, then I'll look like a fool who believed something and got cheated and I don't want that. But mastering anything requires you to risk failing and looking like a fool. It requires you to start selling yourself on the idea that you can master this on an incredible level. And it requires you to stay in close contact with all the great things that you get from mastering this technique. You have to put it on yourself. You have to tell yourself the stories about how great it's going to be once you master this technique. Because there's no Fender or Ibanez Corporation that's going to help you there. They'll help 
you buy the instrument for sure, but you have to sell yourself on learning to play like an alien god from another universe. That's your job. And the people who practice and study hard with pleasure and who absolutely love the process are the ones who sell themselves every single day, consciously or unconsciously. And that's the key that you can put in your lock and make hard work disappear from then on practice is pleasure. I used to sell myself so hard I was about to explode with enthusiasm. I took one lick that was way over my head, way more difficult than any teacher would recommend and I sold myself so hard on mastering that. I imagined how great it would be to pick up the guitar and casually play this impossible lick in front of people. I imagined how great it would sound in the middle of a solo. I saw myself standing on the stage playing this incredible lick with a smile on my face, relaxed. I wallowed in the emotions of standing there playing in front of people. I even imagined telling other people about how I had learned to master this lick. So in my mind, I was teaching people, connecting with them and having fun. I sold myself so hard on learning that lick that I loved the practice sessions and I tried to put in practice whenever I could, even if it was just five minutes. I had an abundance of enthusiasm and energy. I was so sold that whatever resistance I got from my fingers and whatever obstacles I ran into, the scale was still completely tipped over. The most attractive part was still just learning the lick. So whenever you really think you want something, but you can, you can see that you're not taking action, you're not getting it, ask yourself, why isn't this important enough for me? And then start lining up the pros of what it is you want to have. And that's what I would like you to do today. Take a piece of paper and start writing down what it will give you to master this technique. And before I show you a really cool exercise that is also a very cool lick, I'll give you some help with your list. First of all, becoming really good at this is so much easier than having to pick every note that you're playing. This is the sweet route to speed heaven. You can get results fast. And even though doing hammer-ons and pull-offs aren't the hardest technique, it's what people find the most impressive. And I know that you're not playing the guitar just to impress people, but it's nice to do that once in a while. It adds to the show, if you know what I mean. It's part of shredding and with legato, you'll be able to impress everyone around you in the fastest way possible. And what would that do to the rest of your playing? Well, getting results makes you want to go for more. Being able to play fast will make you feel certain that you can master other techniques as well. It will build your self-esteem on stage because you know that you can come out as a guitar god and this will reduce stage fright. You'll have more fun when you perform and being able to play fast with the legato technique will make you go for more of the harder stuff also, like alternate picking, economy picking or sweep picking because there's one thing you know how to do extremely well. You have that foundation, something to fall back on the second you discover that that alternate picking run isn't working out today. Using legato creates a unique sound, this free flow of notes without all the pick strokes. It, it will add to your ability to express yourself musically. And that clear, soft sound of notes that are being hammer on and pulled off is very well suited for the more sad parts of your solo. You can not only use legato to play extremely fast, but you can also use it to create some, some of the darker emotions. And you know what people love that. Suddenly they see an added depth in you and who knows what that will lead to. <laughs> you communicate more intensity to people. Mastering this technique can move you up among the best faster than anything. This will give you more options. There are more people who want to play with you and have you in their band. You start to get offers and you have to work less to find the coolest people to play with. These are some of the reasons why you might decide to really own this technique, but I'm sure you can come up with more. The important thing is to write them down and take them with you. Read them multiple times a day until you can memorize all the cool things that it will give you. See if you can get the feelings that mastering this technique will give you in advance. Imagine yourself on stage, smiling, being relaxed, playing some of the craziest legato stuff known to man. Imagine what that looks like and how that feels. Then when people ask you how you got so good at that, you can tell them the truth or you can say, I practiced a lot. 
I created a PDF for you that you can download for free, print and hang on your wall. It's important to create some kind of flagpole in your reality that will remind you of going through this process in your mind. Because we're so caught up in the daily routines, we often get a really good idea, but then we forget to do anything about it. Our habits take over, but if you create some kind of reminder that you know you'll run into several times a day, you'll make sure that what you want right now will be a reality in the future. Future. Change the future by doing something right now, not tomorrow, not in five minutes, but right now, that will ensure that you sell yourself on this concept. All right, let's look at a cool one string exercise that is also a very cool lick. It will start to build some left hand dexterity, and you can even use some right hand tapping and fretting to spice things up along the way. <laughs> Chances are you already know half of this lick because it's the old classical uh, lick that you know from many places. You can also tap that lick. But then I'm reversing it uh, in order to come up with a variation of it that makes it sound different. So let's take the foot. We're in C ma minor here. So you have your your C minor scale right there and so we're in the, the 8th fret we're in the 11th and the 10th fret here on the high E string and I only pick the first note and from then on all, all other notes are hammer on and pull off so in case you don't know this lick start with uh, your pinky in the 11th fret you pick that note and pull it off down to the 8th fret like that and then you hammer on in the 10th fret. So pick, pull off, hammer on, and hammer on with your pinky. Like that. And then you pull off all the notes down to the first finger again. And the second time you play the lick, uh, you simply just continue by hammering on instead of picking the first note. Sorry. Like that. And then when you reverse the lick and play it, um, yeah, or mirror the lick, you, you simply, instead of starting, you have three notes again. Let's take the three notes, uh, the three notes that are below uh, in the harmonic minor scale, the C harmonic minor. And those would be in the seventh, the eighth, and the tenth fret. And then I use these three notes to reverse the lick. So instead of beginning on the top note, on the three notes here, I'm beginning on the bottom note of these three notes. And as you can see, I'm playing in the first lick, I'm playing the top note and then the bottom note, so eh, or the lowest note. So in my reversal here, I'm going to play the lowest note first and then the top note out of the three notes I have here. So I'm going to play and as you saw before, I play the top, the bottom, and then I go up and down. And I'm going to do the same thing here, but reverse. So it's... And these two things uh, fit well. The ear likes this reversal technique. So... Then I can start going back and forth and moving position every time I shift from one uh, pattern to another. So let's take this reversal first and let's play it slow. That's it. So I pick the first note in the 7th fret, hammer on in the 10th fret, pull off down to the 8th the fret, and down to the 1st, or the 7th the fret again, and then I go right back up with hammer-ons. And when I circle the lick, I simply just pull off the first note once more, and then I pull off And as I said, I can go back and forth between these two. Okay. 
I can also take this lick up the neck, so instead of going back and forth all the time, I can just move one, up, one position up it each time. Move back first. Uh, but let's just put the two together and play those slowly. So first I'm playing the first part of the lick. And then instead of picking the first note in the new lick here, or the second part of the lick, I'm just sliding down and producing the note that way. Let's play that slow. And then I can start moving it up the neck. And then instead of going down, I'm just going to go up here to the 10th, the 11th and the 13th fret. But I'm then going to play the second part of the lick. You might want to practice that a couple of times. And then I can go up here. And I can continue or go right back again. And then end on that C note there. When you go from legato to super legato, you suddenly have some new options because now you can uh, tap the notes in economy picking and alternate picking and sweep picking. String shifts are uh, the troublesome part, the harder part of these techniques. But when you're muting all the strings and then tapping your way on the keyboard, or sorry, on the fretboard, it almost becomes like a keyboard. Uh, and so you don't have to think too much about string shifting anymore. So I have a nice little new classical sounding look for you here. Where you simply tap or again, uh, let's do it in the key of B minor. So we, we're having uh, a pattern up here, the Dorian, if that means anything to you. So uh, you have the 12th, the 14th and the 15th fret on both strings. And then you have, if you move down one position in the B harmonic minor, you have the 11th, the 12th, and the 14th fret, and then the 10th, the 12th, and the 14th on the E string here. So, the lick sounds like this. So you, you begin by tapping the note, in the 12th fret on the B string. Then you tap the note in the 15th fret with your uh, little finger. And then you tap the note again in the 12th fret on the B string. So you go back to the B string all the time in the 12th fret. And this note comes in between all the other notes. So tap the note first in the 15th, the 14th, then the 15th again, and then the 17th. Like that. And then you can pull off all the way down the scale. And we play that a couple of times. And then you when you get down to the to the note here on the B string, you slide down one fret. Like that. And then slide down. So that's the last thing here. So you simply uh, repeat the pattern or the lick, but in another pattern. Uh, and you're in the 11th, the 12th, and the 14th fret. And then you tap the note in the 11th fret on the B string. And then tap the note on the 14th fret. And then in the 12th fret. And then you reach up for the 15th there.
great. I hope practicing these licks will give you an even greater sense of what's possible. In the next video, I'll show you some of the new options you get when you master Super Legato. I'm going to stop picking completely and play with the left hand only. And while that, of course, limits you in a way, it also opens up a lot of new ways to combine the notes on the fretboard. And I'm going to show you a couple of cool arpeggio licks that I think you like. Until then, my friend, have a great day and remember to make time for what's important. See you. Yeah.